Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Eric Forge, uh, founder and CEO of Calvary. And I'd have to say it is time to call in the Calvary. So what does that mean? Like, uh, first of all, our mission as Calvary is to bring all of capital markets on chain. So I'm a former TradFi guy myself, had a long career spanning buy side, sell side, asset management, hedge funds, insurance, pretty much everything you can think about uh, spanning every kind of asset class you can think of. So I've kind of uh, broke out from corporate about 10 years now ago doing startups. I've been on a mission to fix finance, fix TradFi. I think traditional finance is, is pretty much broken and dysfunctional. And I think that instead of trying to fix it, we should just start over. And uh, doing that on chain and doing that on Avalanche is like the perfect place. I can't think of any other place where you can actually build uh, capital markets on chain. And so I would say that uh, if you think about capital markets, you know, you got equities, you got FX, you got commodities, you got fixed income. In the very far corners of the capital markets, there's reinsurance, risk transfer. Reinsurance risk transfer is a very complex corner of the capital markets. But if you could crack that, you can crack everything. So think about how to do risk transfer, uh, reinsurance on chain was kind of the genesis of, of what we're doing. So I was thinking about this problem and I had a eureka moment. How do you price insurance risk? You know, I come from an insurance background. We work with the actuaries. If you think about how do you price insurance risk, you might think if you didn't know better from actuaries. Actuaries will do their calculation, they'll calculate the risk, they'll say, okay, here's a premium based on the actuarial risk. But that's actually not how insurance is priced. If you go to an insurance company and price insurance, it's based on market. I have a product, what will the market uh, accept for that uh, price? So really, pricing insurance risk is about what the market will accept. And so how do you price stuff on chain? Like, how you price anything is through trading. Limit order books have been uh, tried for illiquid assets like uh, reinsurance, insurance-linked securities for, I would say, close to 40, 50 years. And nobody's been able to crack it because it is quite illiquid. So kind of the eureka moment is that AMMs are actually a quite a powerful tool for pricing illiquid risk. So I was thinking about how to do that. And I said, OK, you need contingent future cash flows. We have some claim happening in the future. So all we need is an AMM that can price optionality in the future. Let's try what's out there in the market today. Um, so I looked at like, um, what's going on in other AMMs, like Uniswap, for example. And it just turns out that as a primitive for doing the kind of capital markets that you need for large scale um, finance, um, these kind of primitives that we have now are just not suitable. I don't think the future of capital markets on chain is going to be built on, say, a Uniswap model. So like, we kind of reverse engineered. How do you do risk transfer? What are the primitives you need? Uh, we came up with a, a couple of primitives. You need to be able to price um, optionality. You need to be able to price futures. In turn, in, and what I mean by that is you have to actually have a crypto yield curve. Uh, you can't talk about capital markets without talking about fixed income. So we're talking about bonds, future cash flows. How do you do that with AMMs? So there are no really good solutions to that today. So I kind of created these primitives. And now if you shrink the term structure of a, of a future cash flow to today, what you get is called spot market. So most AMMs today are spot market based. And what I'm talking about today is actually a spot market AMM that we call a multi-swap. So, <clears throat> so if we're trying to price complex future cash flows and Uniswap is not suitable, then what? You have to kind of go back to uh, basic principles. And I'm a former physicist, uh, PhD in physics, computational electromagnetics. I worked at MIT Lincoln Lab in uh, ballistic missile defense of all things. Uh, then I had a long career in TradFi. So I kind of went back to the kind of OG days of derivative pricing. You might have heard of Black-Scholes equations, things like that. So how do you derive Black-Scholes? It's basically a couple of financial principles that you can follow one by one. And basically, if you follow those principles, out pops 
the math. And, and from the math, you can get trading strategies. You can develop delta hedging uh, strategies, et cetera. So I kind of did that here. And there's three principles I came up with that are kind of like, I call them like, almost like Newton's laws in physics. Newton's first law, second law, third law. We have some three principles of AMMs. So here, if you think on, over here, we have a pool of asset tokens. And you have typically, like in, in a used swap model or something, you provide liquidity. In exchange, you get what's called LP tokens. So we have uh, LP tokens or pool tokens. And so the first principle is that the value of your pool tokens is equal to the value of all the assets in the pool. This is a very universal uh, principle for all existing AMMs that I'm aware of, but I haven't seen it kind of written down like in this form. Oops. Then uh, next principles is that you have weights for every token. So if you've seen uh, Balancer, for example, you might be familiar with assigning weights to different assets. These are market value weights. You might not think about it so much in the case of like a two token a pool, like a Uniswap model, where you have two tokens in a pool. But really, that's also weights. So you have 50-50. So like, and it's not just weights. It's actually um, the post-trade weights. So the post-trade weights are actually a constraint on the formalism. This is kind of like financial principle number two. It's still, this is still quite universal. Like Uniswap, Balancer, Curve, they all follow this kind of first two principles. Uh, but the third principle is where we deviate a little bit. And this is kind of the uh, magic secret sauce that makes the whole multi-swap work. And that's what we call uh, self-financing. So if you go back to the OG kind of Black Scholes, it's kind of like quants like me. The fact that trades are self-financing is so obvious that we almost don't even mention it. Like if you look at the original Black Scholes derivations, sometimes they don't even mention it because it's kind of an obvious that all trades have to be but in DeFi, they're not. So like imposing this thing from an OG quant perspective is quite obvious, but from a DeFi perspective, it's actually quite new. And what this means is uh, self-financing means that we shift perspective from reserves, like reserves going into a pool and reserves coming out of the pool. We shift the perspective to value. So we're looking at value. So the value going into the pool is equal to the value coming out. That's quite a natural thing. What that means is no value is created or destroyed in a transaction. The value post-trade is the same as the value pre-trade. But that is a powerful constraint that you can actually turn the cranks and derive what we call liquidity curves uh, for, for our AMMs. And so based on this, uh, me and a co-author, we wrote a paper, uh, Cornell University Archive, which is quite mathematical, unless you're a math nerd. How many here are math nerds? If you're a math nerd, Find me later. I'd love to nerd out with you. But like, this is quite terse mathematical, but it carries the, the basic ideas of, of multi-swap. Uh, this was uh, November 2021. And then from November 2021 until basically now, I've been developing it. So we started that to see it as some beautiful mathematics, some financial engineering. We turned it into a paper. And then thank, thank, thank goodness for Ava Labs and the Avalanche. We got some support, we found a community, and we were able to actually able to build it. So if you come out uh, to our booth near the entrance, please stop by and, and say hello. We, we got a booth out there. Actually, we were joking, like, let's do some multi-swapping. Everybody's multi-swapping. So what is a multi-swap? So if you think about it, like, if you're looking at reserves like 10 Ethereum and 20 Bitcoin, the units are not right. Those are, you can't add 10 Ethereum and five Bitcoin, but you can add $1,000 worth of Ethereum and $2,000 of Bitcoin. You can add value, but you cannot add reserves. So really, the, the key difference here is we're looking at value flow. So once you look at that, if you're swapping like 10 tokens in in a single interaction, all you have to do is calculate the value for each of those 10 tokens, and then you can set an allocation on the buy side. This could be any allocation uh, as long as it adds up to 100%, and then it will allocate value to each token. Then you can reverse uh, the process to calculate how many tokens will come out that correspond to that value. So this is quite a weird and beautiful thing that was actually uh, almost by accident, where you can swap, we call it multi-swap because you can swap M tokens in and N tokens out. Here's an example 
where we're swapping three tokens in exchange for four tokens. So you, if you've seen something like this, you might have seen uh, various uh, protocols can batch transactions. But just to clarify, this is not batching. This is actually natively the AMM is interacting with uh, multi, multiple tokens in a single uh, contract interaction. It's not batching. So recently, we've been testing. This is currently on testnet uh, for, for a few weeks, battle testing. I invite you to come try to break it. Uh, we actually challenge some of our community to try to break it. And nobody's been able to break it so far, but what they did was something beautiful. Uh, somebody last week, I think, they did a swap with 340 tokens in a single interaction. So what does that mean? So you can swap in, like, say, 100 tokens and swap out 240 tokens. Like, why would you want to do that? If you're a large traditional asset manager managing, say, an equity portfolio, this means you can rebalance your entire portfolio in a single transaction. And the transaction fee was like $9. And it settled finality in less than two seconds. So this would actually take several days if you're doing this in TradFi. It costs a lot of money. You'd have traders working on it. You have ops teams working on it. Uh, but this is like fast finality to the avalanche. Uh, in less than two seconds, 340 tokens is beautiful. So if you look at this, what it means, this, the interface is actually quite simple. So what we got here, it's almost like an Amazon uh, cart. You say, add to cart, add to cart. And so like if you're going to uh, sell some tokens, you say, I'm going to sell PG, I'm going to sell HD, I'm going to sell Nike, then I'm going to buy these and just instantly create a swap. And then you can confirm. And like to do like a simple type of one asset for one asset, which you might see on like Uniswap or other protocols, is actually you can do that in three or four clicks. It's actually even simpler than the, the Unif Uniswap interface. And one, another thing about our interface is like with AMMs, you have to provide liquidity and, or swap. There's like two different kinds of groups of people. And so you have two different interfaces. You have one interface for swapping, and you have another interface for providing liquidity. We actually don't need that. We have just one interface, one simple interface for both. In fact, the concept of providing liquidity doesn't even, uh, we don't even call it that with us. Really what we say is you're buying LP tokens. LP token is just another token. You have N assets. In this case, it's over 500 uh, tokens in a single pool. So with the S&P 500 as a test case, you have over 500 tokens in a single pool. The LP token is like shares of an ETF. So the LP value will track the underlying assets, of the 500 tokens. But a beautiful thing about that, if you think about it, with over 500 tokens in a single AMM pool, you have 125,000 trading pairs. So to try, to try to replicate this in the precise manner on another like two token uh, protocol, you'd actually need 125,000 pools to replicate this. So you get uh, all the trading pairs for free, Another beautiful thing, selling point for this, is that uh, there's zero fragmentation of liquidity. Like for certain tokens, like if you look at Uniswap, Wrapped Ethereum is currently uh, fragmented across 400 different pools. So that's quite wasteful and capitally inefficient. Whereas with us, all the Wrapped Ethereum or Wrapped AVEX or BTCB, whatever token you're, you're, you're swapping, the entire liquidity for that token is available for any other swap. So what that means is the capital efficiency is just through the roof. Nothing can compare to this. We don't yet implement concentrated liquidity because we don't need to. Because usually what other protocols do is step one, let's fragment liquidity and say, oh, capital efficiency went out the window. And then let's try to improve capital efficiency by introducing special tricks. With this, we don't even fragment in the first place. So it's highly capital efficient. Uh, and it's good for traders. But it's also something special in the mathematics here is it's quite good for LPs. That's something that's not quite the same with some, some other protocols out there. And so this, I highly recommend coming out because we got some demos at our booth. See it in action. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, some, some charts, like it's been a bit technical, but it's actually easier to see chart go up. <laughs> so like, if you want to see what chart goes up, looks like. So what this is, is we did some simulations where we start with an equal pool on, say, Uniswap v2. We start with uh, the same TVL uh, for our multi-swap. And then we say, with and without fees, 
And so some, some things I highlight here is that if we introduce fees, which would be the same fees as, say, the Uniswap, then the LP wealth is just outstanding. You know, it's, you know, in this case, it's a crazy bull run. So in the crazy bull run, a buy and hold was actually quite good. So the gray would be the, the HODL portfolio or a buy and hold portfolio. Uh, but with us, it's a bit diversified. So we didn't quite get the maximum upside, but it's still quite good. But then we also don't get the downside after, after the, the crazy bull market. So we actually get quite good LP wealth. So this creates a new opportunity for new kinds of liquidity providers who might be managing a treasury, for example, a Dow treasury, an asset manager with a cash market. So, so if you're managing some kind of treasury, this is actually quite good. It's a little hard to see uh, the actual dynamics here because it's wealth in terms of USDT that we're looking at. But this is a beautiful thing here. So it takes a minute to understand what this is. So this is looking at the LP wealth versus a perfectly rebalancing portfolio. So what does that mean? An AMM is essentially a portfolio. You have a bunch of assets in there. You have some specified weights. That means it's a portfolio. The LP token is like shares of that portfolio. Any portfolio should have a benchmark. So in, in this case, we're saying our benchmark is actually a perfectly rebalancing uh, portfolio. And so in this case, there's uh, some papers uh, published in the last couple of months about what's called loss versus rebalancing, which is actually a better metric for measuring the performance of an AMM. And if you use the same definitions, then our AMM is actually perfectly rebalancing. There's zero loss versus a perfectly rebalancing portfolio. Whereas uh, Uniswap with and without fees, it experiences loss relative to a rebalancing portfolio. And I'd be very happy to go into the details of how that works and why this is the case, but it's actually quite good for LPs. So it's better for traders because we do not fragment liquidity, so you get better capital efficiency uh, for trading, but it's also actually much better for LPs because you can actually make money as an LP here, so it's very good for treasury management. So, so I would say this is, in terms of AMMs, I would say I, I, I'm looking forward to a talk tomorrow because we have a panel like talking about clubs versus AMMs, that's, all, that's always a full, uh, very fun uh, debate to have. But I would say like clubs have been around for decades and they've been optimized uh, for decades. AMMs are so new that the design space just hasn't been explored yet. So like the AMM design space hasn't been touched. Uh, now we have, what we have here is I think quite a new fundamental advance in terms of AMM technology, where I think this can actually perform on par with uh, central limit order books uh, in the form of an AMM, which is particularly good for illiquid assets. Because if you recall, what I'm looking for is uh, a way to price and create liquidity for illiquid assets. And this is very good uh, for that kind of stuff. So I hope I have time to see. So it looks like I'm good. So let's see. Like I said, I, I'm super happy to be here. I thank AV Labs for the support. Uh, this event has been great for us. I'm very proud of my team. We gave a, a, a workshop yesterday, and it's almost like I'm not even needed anymore. As a founder, it's beautiful when your team can step up and explain your product better than you can, so I'm very happy. So come talk to our team. We're at the booth. Uh, Julie's CFO, Caleb Product, Dini's partner advisor, uh, Ayman. Uh, Everybody in Ava Labs loves Ivan. He's, uh, he's a great guy, so come talk to Ivan. Leo and Pilano. Leo's in China, and Pilano's in uh, Thailand. So we're still a small team, but we think we're, we have something very special here. So I'd love to uh, talk to you about that. So feel free uh, to come to our booth or find me. Happy to talk to you about uh, multi-swap.